welcome to this special APEC wrap-up edition of the war. Great as always to have your company. And uh, Craig, aren't these dryzer bones oh, great? What a, what a fantastic appropriate choice, wasn't mm. it? Because after APEC refused to set targets for climate change, the world pretty much will be dry as a bone. It will be. But look, look at that. You can't expect too much to come out of a $330 million summit, Chris. I mean, for some leaders, it was hard enough just knowing what the summit was called. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, thank you for your introduction. Thank you for being such a... Uh, a fine host for the OPEC summit. Georgie, mm -hmm. Georgie, Georgie. And then did you see at other times in the conference he called it IPEC, UPEC and uh, Gregory Peck. <laughs> and, uh, and the gaffes then continued when he tried to praise Australia's commitment to Iraq. As John Howard accurately noted when he went to thank the Austrian troops there. <laughs> no, that, that wasn't actually a gaffe. Howard did visit the Austrians in Iraq. There he is. Oh, my mistake. Yes. My, it's, like, it's a famous photo. I apologise. But uh, it does beg the question, if someone as stupid as George Bush can get a seat at the APEC table to discuss the war on terror, then shouldn't we open it up to all the key players in world terror, like Osama bin Laden? Exactly. Where was Osama's invite? He should have been there at APEC. And who better to help him get them there than the most wanted people in the world right now? Julian Morrow and Chaz Lichardello. <laughs> Oh, he does. Look, $160 million they spent on APEC security, the biggest lockdown operation the country's ever seen, and yet there were holes in the security wide enough to drive three trucks, two motorcycles and four Secret Service guards through. <laughs> Top effort, blokes. Uh, let's have a look now at how it all unfolded. Talk us through it. OK, well, Osama likes to travel in style, mm. right? So we made a do-it-yourself motorcade, cunningly disguised with go. this Canadian go, go. flag. Oh, yeah. It's a modern-day Trojan horse. Yeah, but there are a few hints we were fakes, like our official code, SFA. <laughs> yeah, I don't think motorcades have had runners since JFK, especially not ones with handy cam. But once we were rolling, nothing was going to stop us, except... Oh, fuck, we got a red light. <laughs> yeah, let him through. But yeah, cops go. don't keep a psalm away. So watch this guy here. He stops the traffic and then waves us through. <laughs> that was amazing. No questions asked at all. On we roll. Right up to what they call the Ring of Steel. There it is. And didn't security jump on us? We stopping? No, you're fine. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Not too much checking at that checkpoint. Yeah, so look, we were just walking on down, right on down to the red zone. Now, that is the real no-go zone. But I'll tell you what, it's pretty, pretty relaxed in yeah. there. Look at this guy come up here with his back to us. I don't know what he's looking at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now, you know, the media said we got past a second checkpoint, but it, it wasn't really like a checkpoint. It was more like a guard of honour. Yeah. They're not too fast, are they? Yeah, now look, by this stage, it's become pretty bloody obvious the cops weren't going to stop us, so we decided to stop ourselves. Sorry. I'm oh, sorry, I'm going to have to turn this around. We've got to go back. We've got to go back. OK. Now, uh, at this stage, we've got much further than we ever inspected. I think that's fair to say. And all of a sudden, we're trying to turn around a motorcade right in front of George W. Bush's hotel. Chaz, I was a bit worried. Yeah, but as for the cops, well, they weren't so worried. So we need to go back this way, OK? OK, turn around, turn around. Thank you very much. Thank you, officers. Good work. Great work. Well, they did say the road was ours. Ours to do whatever we like, apparently. So, uh, look, we've been in that car for ages, mm. so we thought we might stretch our legs a little. OK, okay. let's walk. Let's walk. Yeah, all right, let's go. All right. He's walking with me. All right, come on, let's go. And I think this is when they got a bit suspicious. I think so, so yeah. Who are you? Officer Julian Morrow. Chase. VIP liaison. OK. So here right. I am, Assam Bin Laden, That's staying ten you. metres away That's from right. Bush's hotel. So what do they do? They arrest the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, hang on. Oh, there's some other guys coming to arrest you now. No, they're for me as well. No. Yeah. <laughs> Poor old Assam. No one likes Assam. Oh. Got him then. Uh, give it up for our apex supervillains, Julian and Chaz. I'm telling you, all it takes is a Canadian flag. Yeah. That's yeah, it. Well, it's funny you mention that because they actually tightened security the day after you guys did it. It was they kind of tightened it up a lot. They did. Well, they said they did, but we just wanted to be absolutely sure that it had been tightened. So. The very next day, we went to see if the cops had got any better at spotting a fake Canadian motorcade. <laughs> Canadians. Sorry? Leave the area, please. We've got a Canadian flag. Turn around, leave the area, please. 
I can't believe it. What's wrong with this thing? I can't believe it. This doesn't it. look any more ridiculous than the other one. <laughs> it's a big improvement. It was good. Much yeah, tighter, yeah. which is very reassuring. Well, not quite, Chris, because there was actually another security breach at APEC which left the police even more red-faced. <laughs> oh, look out. He's infiltrated again. The man's a mastermind. <laughs> To be honest, I don't think you do need to be a mastermind to get past Apex security, Chris. If any of the cops had bothered to look at our passes, they should have seen they were clearly marked JOKE in capital letters. Uh, to be fair, though, I think on George Bush's security pass, he's also been marked in JOKE, so... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Look, well, I still reckon no other security guard would have fallen for those fake passes. Mm. Which brings us to our brand new segment... Hi. Hi. Now, I've got to see some driver's license, please. We're getting everywhere with this. This is access to all areas. You can get into the red zone with this. It uh, doesn't matter, sir. We're from Canada. I would have to see some driver's license, some form of identification. You're good. That's, no, no, you're great. You get your job at IPEC. Good work. They need people like you. Yeah. Right, so it's official. RSLs are harder to get into than AP. Absolutely. But uh, what I've loved about this whole thing has been the media response. Mm. Mm. Uh, Talkback in particular has been running hot. Back-to-back -back callers saying they thought the stunt was dangerous, yeah. stupid, they reckon we should all be locked Jail. up in jail. Now, look, I agree, but I, I don't think those calls went far enough. So I rang up a station myself to give them a piece of my mind. Hello, Peter. Hello, John. The reason I rang was uh, the chasers. The chasers, uh, yes. I think they should be actually thrown in jail. But, but for how long, do you reckon? Well, for 10 years. And, and I think it shouldn't just be them. It should be anyone who was involved with that production. They should just all go to jail. Right, you so need this to is a way a very for strong the, yeah, This is the way to make the others think about what it is they're involved in. Absolutely. Yeah. Actually, throw their boss in jail. How That's far do you want to go? I mean, do you want to go to the, the boss of the ABC, maybe? Absolutely. Throw the boss of the ABC in jail. Why not? Throw the whole board. Maybe to make an example of someone that they actually care about. Like, say, like that Kerry O'Brien guy. I'm, I imagine he was involved somehow. If you yeah, throw him in jail, maybe those chaser guys wouldn't think they're so funny. Yeah, I think that would certainly clarify a few things. Hey? Yeah. You'd sell him, Shaz. You'd sell him. Yes, but it was one of those stories where everyone had an opinion. I mean, even the opposition leader, Kevin Rudd, weighed into it. Hu <laughs> I've got a funny feeling that if he becomes our next Prime Minister, he'll probably redesign Parliament House to look a bit like this. <laughs> but look, look, guys, motorcades aside, I think it was actually quite a good APEC. It was quite a successful APEC. And, and of course, it climaxed on Saturday night with the official APEC fireworks, which incidentally, no one in Sydney was allowed to watch. Yeah, that's true. Everyone in Sydney was sold to stay at home, to avert their eyes, as the fireworks were only to be watched by APEC dignitaries. That's fair enough. But uh, Sydney siders hate missing out on a fireworks display, so we decided to put on a rival fireworks show which the public could watch at the very same time as the APEC one. So here it was, last Saturday night, there's the official APEC fireworks over Sydney Harbour. Three, two, one. Then Hanson and I put on a bit of a show of our own. <laughs> and then just a little bit of a sign we lit up to send a message to APEC. Nice. 